Hello and welcome to Morning Prayer on the 23rd of March. My name's the Reverend Paul Lavender. Thank you for joining me today on what is the anniversary of the United Kingdom going into national lockdown. And we're in engaging and sharing today in the collective national act of remembrance and recollection uh, for this anniversary, marking this occasion, uh, both by looking back and also by looking forward with hope. At 12 noon today, we will be uh, marking that with a short act of recollection, remembrance and thanksgiving. You're welcome to join uh, me for that, which I'll be leading on behalf of Churches Together in Northampton. And also this evening at 9pm, we will be uh, meeting together again for evening prayer. You know, just over a year ago, I began leading morning and evening prayers at what was a very dark time in the life of our nation. And I've been privileged to see how many of you have joined with me this past uh, year. And so we'll be meeting uh, morning and evening like we used to at 9am now and at 9pm this evening. And after that, if anyone would like to, there's been a community, a small but significant community of people who've regularly met together and interacted and got to know one another. And afterwards, I'll be hosting an informal brief Zoom gathering. And if you'd like to know more about that, you can send me a message, a private message here on Facebook, either now or after prayer. And I'll gladly send you the link to be able to join in with that. But first and foremost, right now, let's gather together to pray. So let's remember the presence of the Lord with us now. Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps you keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Amen. Let's pray together. Most generous God, with thankful hearts we rejoice in your goodness towards us and in the many blessings that we receive each day. In love you provide for your people's needs and you accompany us along the way. We give you thanks for the physical gifts that sustain us and for the added blessings which make life more joyful and full. We rejoice that you freely pour out the perfume of your love, even though we are not worthy to receive it. We are thankful for those who have been bountiful towards us, giving of their time, their skills and their love. As a token of our gladness, may we also bless others, being generous with all that you have bestowed. Holy God, your word declares that you have taken away our iniquity and that you remember our sin no more. But we confess that we focus too much on ourselves and our failures, our feelings and our merits that we choose to be consumed by our guilt and our shame and refuse the salvation that you offer us freely through the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. Forgive us when we forget the comfort of your love, our fellowship with your spirit, and the tenderness and compassion you have called us to show to a world in need. Forgive us when we care so much about ourselves and what we want that we forget to love our neighbour and in so doing forget to love you. Almighty Father, take from us all hatred and prejudice and discord. Remind us that there is but one body and one spirit and one hope of our calling, 
one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, so that we may truly be of one heart and of one soul, united in one holy bond of truth and peace, of faith and charity, and that with one mind and one mouth we may glorify you through Jesus Christ our Lord. So may Almighty God forgive us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, give us time to amend our lives, and bring us the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're continuing to read through the Gospel according to John, and today in chapter 9, we begin to read at the 18th verse. The Jews did not believe that, Jesus, that the man had been blind and had received from Jesus his sight until they called the parents of the man who'd received his sight and asked them, Is this your son whom you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, we know that this is our son and he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, once I was blind, but now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world begun has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin." But now that you say we see, your sin remains. Thanks be to God for his word. As I look out of my window this morning, I can see buds and blossoms appearing on the tree. I can see flowers in the ground around me. It's a beautiful scene. It's signs of new life. Now, the man who was born blind is in a similar way having his eyes opened to the beauty around him, not just of the earth, not just of people, but his eyes are being opened spiritually. You know, this man, like many of us, may not be able to answer the most profound theological questions, but he knew his own experience of the work of God through Jesus Christ in his life. And he was able to give proper testimony, sound testimony, accurate testimony of what had happened to him. And he knew who
who had done it. The new world, as seen through God's eyes, was opening up to him through his own renewed spiritual sight. And for you and for me, each day, it's a good thing to pray, Lord, let me see. Let me see you more clearly. Let me love you more dearly. And let me follow you more nearly, day by day. That lovely prayer, which many of us know in the musical form set to the music of Godspell, is a wonderful prayer which resonates with the experience of this man born blind who encountered Jesus, who was transformed by Jesus and whose witness was to those around him of the difference that Jesus makes. The world opens up, we're able to interpret the world and what happens in the world more accurately as we see it from God's point of view. May that be our testimony as we enter this continued season of lockdown, even though things are beginning to open up again, that we may ask to see both with the eyes of faith, but also as Jesus works in our lives, we may interpret things from his point of view and so give glory to God. Let's confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let's pray together. Loving and healing God, we turn to you in prayer, confident that you are with us and all people in every moment. We come before you as people of hope, trusting in your care and protection. May your faithful love support us and soothe the anxiety of our hearts. Generous God, fill us with compassion and concern for others, young and old, that we may look after one another in these challenging days. Bring healing to those who are sick with the coronavirus. Be with their families. May those who have died rest in your eternal embrace. Comfort family and friends. Strengthen and protect all medical professionals caring for the sick and all those who work in our medical facilities. Give wisdom to leaders in health care and government that they may make the right decisions for the well-being of all people. We pray with gratitude for all those in our country who continue to work on the front line, serving us and so many in different fields and walks of life. Bless them and keep them safe. A God of creation and life, we place them and ourselves into your protection, asking that the mantle of your peace would enfold us this and every day. God of healing and hope. In Jesus, you meet us in our places of pain and fear. Look with mercy on those who have contracted the virus, Corona-19. On all who are vulnerable and all who feel in danger throughout our world. Through this time of global concern, by your Holy Spirit, bring out the best and not the worst in us. Make us more aware of our interdependence on each other and of the strength that comes from being one body in you. Through Christ, our wounded healer. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, 
and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So whatever wilderness the Spirit has brought you to, walk in boldness as a beloved child of God, walk in peace under the shelter of the Most High, and walk in faith, knowing Christ walks with you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you, with those whom you love, and with God's people everywhere, this day and forevermore. Amen. God bless you today. A reminder of our act of remembrance at uh, 12 noon today, uh, both on Facebook and on YouTube. And again tonight we have evening prayer at 9pm. You're welcome to join at any or all of those events. But until we meet again to pray, goodbye and God bless you.